my name is Taylor Jones. I am the founder of DeerPhotograph.com and I'm here at Luminance 2012. I think I love photography because I've always kind of had it around me. Um, my mom, she has hundreds and hundreds of photos that she's kind of hoarded in, in our basement. Mom would always be like, oh, come on, just one more picture. Let's do another one. We'd be like, no, mom, stop it. So like, but now we appreciate it. Um, hey, I'm Taylor Jones. Uh, it's great to be here. Um, obviously, I'm from, well, I guess you don't know this yet, but I'm from Canada. Um, so yeah, it's cool to be in uh, New York right now. Um, so I'm just going to start off. How does a, now I'm 23 year old, go from this to this to this in about a year and three months? Well, it all started from the photo that I just showed you. Um, here, this is my brother Landon. He, uh, he was sitting in the photo, obviously sitting at our old kitchen table with his Winnie the Pooh cake and his Oshkosh Bagosh uh, outfit from like 96 or something, I'm not sure. So what happened was I found this photo when uh, I was at my parents' house and we were looking through an old photo album with, all, you know, I don't know if no one really knows about them anymore, but the old plastic ones were, you, you put your, the four photos in on, on each side. And so we had a full, full photo of My mom has around like a few hundred at our house because she was just a hoarder for photos when we were kids, I guess. And um, so I came across this photo while we were looking through the old photo album after a dinner one night. And um, my brother was sitting, I don't know if you can kind of see the chair behind the photo. He was sitting in that chair in the present time. And then I was sitting in the chair from where my mom originally took the photograph. So it was, some, some, it was just like one of those things that happens where it occurred to me, and I was like, oh, this is actually kind of cool how this is happening. And so what happened was, whenever I think of something, I think, okay, how can I put this online? Uh, I had a ton of websites before I started Dear Photograph. And so what happened was I went and grabbed my, cam uh, my camera, and I took this photo. And then we started flipping through the photo album a bit more, and I came across around six other photos that were from around the house, so it was very easy access. And I took a few more deer photographs. It wasn't called deer photograph right when I thought of it, like right when I put, like, took the photo. But So what happened was I, I put the six, six or seven photographs onto Tumblr. And when you put on Tumblr, when you upload a photo, it asks you uh, for a caption. Um, so when I uploaded the photo, I kind of thought to myself, okay, how? can I talk to the photo um, in like a simple form? So I thought, okay, when people write letters, they write dear whoever. And so for this, I wrote dear photograph. And, and I wrote, wrote like, yeah, like I said, seven more. And I just uh, made this Tumblr and I posted it, uh, obviously on my Facebook and on my Twitter. And people really reacted to it. It was like the first time that I posted something that people were like, oh, this is actually kind of cool. Uh, and which was a good feeling for me. And yeah, and then I got, started to get more photos from people from uh, like online, people that I didn't even know. And then, th so that's when I kind of realized that this actually could be something. Um, so I post, I, I posted every, once a day I post a dear photograph, uh, just to kind of keep people coming back. And uh, it, the traffic's been good enough that every, I get around five to 10 photos a day. Um, so I have thousands of photos just waiting to be posted right now. So uh, I kept on posting the photos, and then I was, at the time, I was working at Research Emotion, which probably most of you know as, as Blackberry, and I was doing social media for them. I started my job in April, and I started the blog May 25th. Um, so I was, it was funny. I would be doing interviews in the morning, like press interviews, because it really started to pick up, just like local Canadian press stuff. And then I would uh, come home during my lunch and do more interviews. And my boss kind of caught on to what was happening. And he didn't really like the fact that I was doing that. But it had to be done because I, needed, I, I knew this was something that was really special. Um, so I guess once I, w once I really started to see the traffic picking up, I was, I was starting to get really like, stoked about it. And s one day while I was working at RIM, Mashable emailed me, and like I read Mashable every day, and I was just like, holy shit, this is crazy, it's Mashable. And so I did the interview with Mashable, and that kind of got the ball rolling even more. Then around two weeks after that, it hit the front page of Reddit, and the, the analytics that I showed you before uh, were from uh, the day that it hit the front page of Reddit and got a quarter of a million hits. 
So then ever since then, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of really been doing well. And there are a few photographs that are pretty, like the prominent photographs that have really helped out the website. This one's from a man named Jonathan Stamp. And um, his caption reads, Dear Photograph, thank you for everything we had. Um, obviously, it provokes a lot of emotion. This is the photograph that usually people um, usually cry about, that I, like I hear. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a great photo. And it, yeah, like I said, so much emotion coming out of it. So that was one of the ones that was really big on the website. Um, yeah, like I said, I did all this press and stuff, and Diane Sawyer, and I was like person of the week on ABC World News, which is crazy, because I was just this kid from Canada that, that started this website, and it's, uh, it's been interesting to see. I, I, I've always been a big fan of photography, and I've always kind of had an eye. I wouldn't consider myself like a professional photographer or anything, but like I love photography and I, and I, and I like doing it. So the, the website's a real mix of photography, creativity, and I love the internet. Um, it's a funny story, I, my, my buddies are always bugging me about uh, me being on my computer for, for so long and, and they, didn't, they didn't really understand. And so like nights that we'd be going out and we'd be like, they'd be like, oh Taylor, let's, uh, let's go out and let's, like, let's party and let's get some girls. And I'd be like, oh no, I got girls back home. I got my Facebook, my Twitter, my Tumblr, my Instagram. What else do I need? So they, they've always been bugging me. So this kind of showed them, I guess you could say. Uh, so it's been really cool to, to be a nerd and be cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm going to show you a few photos here. Um, you're not going to know what's going on in the photos because there's no caption. Um, so what's been really good for Dear Photograph is that the caption really explains the photo and tells you what's actually happening. Um, the photo is obviously very important, but it's weird to think that the caption can really bring much more to uh, what the, the whole thing really is. So I'm just going to go through a few photos here, and uh, I'll give you a few seconds to look at it and kind of analyze them. And, uh, and then I'll show them to you after with the captions. So now I'll read them to you with the captions. Dear Photograph, her love is my chemo. I beat cancer. Eric. Dear Photograph, if I could turn the corner in 1942 and walk right into my mother, I'd ask her, may I walk beside you one more time? Love, Michelle. Dear Photograph, I have no idea what sort of Christmas present awaited my brother Casey in that tube. Just like I had no idea that this past week, Casey would die in a horrible accident in Kerala, India. I wanted to bring him home one last time to our house in Texas. This is the only way I could. It's been a tough week. Joe. Dear Photograph, I found you in the attic when we moved, moved in. I wonder if you lived happily ever after here. Alex. Dear Photograph, Thirty years ago, I was that little boy who could see the beauty in all things far and wide. Perhaps that is the innocence of childhood, looking at life with clarity and simplicity, always enjoying the view. I hope I never lose sight of that. Giuseppe. Dear Photograph, eight years ago, our world rejoiced when we said, I do. This year, my first without you here, I know the heavens rejoice too. I'm so glad I had those seven years with you because those seven years will define who I am for the rest of my life. Miss and love you always, Brandy. Dear Photograph, my grandpa doesn't recognize me anymore, but he still smiles every time I show him this picture. I hope that deep inside he remembers how much I loved hanging out with him. Love, Laura. Dear Photograph, why can't I feel the color that Halloween used to bring me? It's hard to see the magic through grown up, through the magic through grown up glasses, Paisley. 
Dear Photograph, there's always been a little superhero hiding somewhere in all of us. It's what you do with your powers that makes you fly, Jenny. So obviously, I, I hope you all felt some sort of emotion out of those. <laughs> if not, then, uh, then yeah. I, <laughs> I, I was going to say something, but I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> um, so it's just crazy to me how much emotion can come out of it, because for me, the original photo I took was just a photo of my younger brother sitting at a kitchen table. And then it turned into this whole entire roller coaster ride of emotion of people sending me photos of loved ones who have passed away or, or photos of um, a funny time or like just random photos. And it's, uh, it's been cool for me because it's almost made me grown as a person because every day I see between five to ten of these in my inbox. And some put a smile on my face, and some give me goosebumps, and uh, some make me like want to go hug my grandparents or my parents. It's it's a it's a really emotional thing, and I, I'm very happy to be able to, I guess, almost curate this this project. Um, so for a few minutes right now, I'm going to be Ellen DeGeneres, and for the, on the 12 days of Christmas, and give away a few things. <laughs> um, so I've been talking about how. Um, Sorry, I had to hide for a second. How uh, f like photos bring so much emotion out. And for me, I feel like right now, I, I, you see people taking photos all the time on their phone and everything. And I've found this new love of disposable cameras and obviously film. I took, uh, I took photography in high school. And luckily, we had a dark room. And I learned how to, how to develop the film and everything. And uh, that was a cool experience. So. Um, I know probably everybody here probably has a smartphone with a camera on it, but does anybody here actually have a film camera on them? Yes? There's a few? Oh, good job. Wow, there's actually more than I thought. Okay, well, you guys don't get any of these, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know how to do this. I, I've done this before, and last time I just threw them out to people. So whoever wants a disposal camera, just put up your hand, and I want to throw like some far ones. So I'll, I'll throw a few short ones. You guys can fight over it. There you go. Uh, so back here, okay, ready? Ready for this? Who? Nice catch. Okay, uh, over here, over here. Who wants one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fight for it. <laughs> Who else? I want a long one. I see hands over here. Ready? Everybody, watch their heads. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm not a bride. <laughs> um, so yeah, I want you guys to take those cameras, and I want you to take, or to just take photos that are, like, because most of these, all the photos that I get are, like, people's memories. So make sure you're not just taking, like, typical Instagram shots of, like, a leaf falling from the sky or your shoes or something. Like, take something that actually means something to you and get them developed and go put them somewhere in your house and have them as a conversation starter. Because for me, uh, I. I've been doing it for a while. I've been uh, printing photos for probably over a year now since I kind of started this, and it made me want to print photos. And now I have this book in my house that has all my photos from the past year and all my travels that I've done and everything. And it's like one of the first things that people open up when they come into my place and they look through everything that I've done, and it, and it starts a conversation. And it, and it, it kind of, it's almost, it's, it's really cool to be able to see that because People aren't just going to walk right to my place, go up to my computer, and go look through my Facebook photos when they come into my house. It's a totally different thing. So yes, use those uh, disposal cameras wisely. <laughs> um, so this photo I got, uh, I guess it was last August, um, from a man named uh, Mark Yokoyama. Uh, he was actually from New York. and. It has been the most popular photo on the website so far. Um, and it reads, Dear Photograph, I was astounded, but I hadn't had time to consider what I was seeing. So I've, obviously the caption is very simple, um, but the, the photo is very, very powerful. Um, you can obviously see the, the, uh, the Freedom Tower being built in the background. Um, I really like how the shot was done with the taxi kind of uh, it's blur kind of blurred, making so it's almost kind of like saying that everything is still moving, like we're all still still here, and and it's just a really powerful photo, and uh, obviously it's done well on the blog. It's gotten over just under 300,000 uh, notes on Tumblr. 
Um, and it's uh, reached a lot of very cool people. Um, this actually happened the other day. I, I was just at a, a, a photography exhibit in Switzerland. I flew in yesterday. And I, I was sitting in my room, and then all of a sudden I started to get all these tweets and, and notifications saying that um, Rihanna had Instagrammed uh, the photo, which is very, very crazy. Because, like, this, this is a photo that obviously means a lot to, to everybody, and it's, and it's so powerful. And to be able to, to reach someone like that and, and have it put out there for people to see, it was, it was very cool. But she, obviously, she didn't credit anybody. She didn't credit Mark Yokoyama or Dear Photograph, so typical. But, um, <laughs> but then also, Kim Kardashian did the same, I guess, right after she saw Rihanna post it. <laughs> so I, I, Mark and I kind of got a little screwed on, on, the, on the, the crediting for it, but what can you do? It's, a lot of people saw it, and now it's almost become more of like this photo that, that people can recognize during, uh, during like, the, I guess, the anniversary of 9-11. Of I, I posted, uh, like I said, I posted it last year, and this year, a few days before, I posted it. And uh, it's amazing to see people's reactions and um, hear the people talk about it and their stories once you post it. Because your photographs really become more of like a platform for people to share how they feel about the photos. So like on, on the website, if you, if you click on the actual, just like the separate link of the photo that I post every day, you'll see I have the Facebook integration on it. So you can see people commenting to each other. So if it was a, a grandparent who passed away from leukemia or whatever it was, you see that there's people commenting back saying, oh, I lost my mother from leukemia last week, and I, it's glad, I'm glad to know that there's someone else out there who feels the exact same way that I do. So it's, it's been very insane for me to, because I was just sitting at my kitchen table taking a photo of a photo after dinner, and it's become Kim Kardashian Instagramming a photo of September 11th. So like, it's just, it, it's blown my mind because it's, everything's just been so surreal for me. Um, so this is one of the, this was actually one of the the other photos that I took. That's me looking pretty snazzy in a in a nice tux. <laughs> the caption reads, "Dear photograph, I looked good in a tux." Now I probably wouldn't look as cute, but I think that night a girl gave me twenty dollars to kiss her, and she was like she was like twenty or something. Um, so I got I got lucky that night. It was obviously because I looked snazzy. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna leave you uh, with a few. Uh, a few more thoughts about uh, how I feel about everything. Um, Nostalgia has become this huge trend. Obviously, we've seen Instagram being bought by Facebook and whatever. They had some shares bought out um, for a billion dollars. And it's weird that there's, this, there's an app that makes things look old that someone bought for a billion dollars. If you told someone that, like, in the 1950s, they would probably think you're a witch and try to kill you or something, I don't know. So this whole trend of, of old becoming cool is, it's interesting to me because I've always been uh, like an old soul kind of person. Like I've been collecting records and all my friends used to make fun of me for it. And obviously I took photography class with all the other nerds and everybody used to give us shit for being weird. And so it's, it's been, it's, it's, very cool to, to see all this new technology meeting the past and, and bring it into the present, or to the present, sorry. Um, so I'm just gonna leave you with one last thought. Yeah, make sure you, you take, I don't wanna be some motivational speaker here, but capture all the moments that you can with your camera. Um, because like the flash of a camera, uh, we could all be gone. So thank you very much, appreciate it. You, you kind of mentioned it up front when you were showing the non-captioned photos, but do you find, you know, typically, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, and typically we're trying to find a, an image to illustrate text. Yeah. Is there any sort of irony you find that how much, like, something poetic, like a single sentence can add to the emotion that people experience? Yeah, because, well, like I, I showed you, it's the photo, it's, it's odd to, to think that just the photo, you, you'd look at it and be like, oh, that's it's just a photo when there's someone... Uh, some bald man holding a young daughter, and then you add the caption, and it's 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 weird that the caption actually adds a lot more to to what 
the photo actually is like it's it's like the photo is talking to you. Right. Um, so it, it's yeah, it's it's cool because the whole idea has been done before of people holding up an old photo. Um, it's been done uh, since like the 1950s or something. There was a man who who did it in black and white, and um, and so adding the caption is really what's what's changed it uh, for Dear Photograph, um, and it's it's made it this this whole entire thing that people like you just you just feel it. You feel the photo and you feel the caption. So yeah, the the caption adds a lot, but the photo is obviously very very pow makes it makes it powerful, and then the caption kind of brings it up a bit. And so many of the photographs are sort of recounting um, people who have passed away. Yeah. And I wonder if you ever feel a certain morbidity about the whole situation where, yeah. you know, you're, you're almost becoming kind of like a therapist in some ways, a platform for therapy. Yeah. Um, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I think the reason behind that is, well, I know the reason behind it is, is because everybody who has all the old photos, the, those, the people who have passed away are the ones that took them. And so people go into their shoe boxes or go into their photo album of their grandparent who's passed away or their mom who passed away. And all they have left are th these, these old photos of them. So it's like th you go back into the past with this person when you're, when you're holding up the photo and you're in that moment. And it, I, don't, I don't know if people have tried it before, but when you're actually doing it, it's like you're, you're there. So I, I, haven't had, I haven't done a photo of someone that, uh, someone that I know who's, who's passed away but I can just imagine the feeling behind doing something like that. But yeah, for me, it's been, it's, you see like a really sad photo and it's just like, oh man, like today, really? I was right. having a good day. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's been, uh, it's, it's awkward, <laughs> I guess you could say. <laughs> well, I found them inspiring, so thank you. Taylor. Thank you very much, I appreciate it.